if you like, lack of opportunity for, for, for that scrutiny as well. Now that we are getting uh, devolution more in terms of some of the things that we agree, and, and also a new structure, then it's absolutely right that we grow scrutiny, you know, and that's why it's important to me that there is no politics in scrutiny. There shouldn't be any politics in scrutiny, because at the end of the day, hopefully, hopefully every one of us, whatever political party we belong to, is here to get the best outcomes of the people we represent. That's what scrutiny should be about. Not to nitpick and not to try and score points about this or that. And I'm sorry, but you know, some people will, will try to make that happen. your business, we've made the recommendations and we, can, and we will live by those recommendations. The combined authority will, 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 will live by its decision. Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree with you and, and I'll end on that, but if you, if, if you look at the Liverpool City Council, we've got 80 Labour councillors who are representative on the scrutiny committee here. Who's Liverpool City Council's representative on the scrutiny the Green Council? I think that shows my uh, willingness and determination to have scrutiny because we could have had a Labour to have an opposition council here. Any other questions? Mr. Jones. Thank you. It isn't really a question, it's just a line or two of the support for, for what has been said. Being the Conservative rep on this scrutiny committee, I fully support the fact uh, that we are looking to having a non-political organisation here because we are here to do the best for the people of the whole of Poverty. Uh, yes, I'm from St Helens, uh, but I am not representing St Helens on here, I'm representing in those authorities that have Conservative councillors. Uh, we must work together, we must get it right for the people, and we mustn't be afraid of saying to the combined authority, I'm sorry, you've got it wrong, because, because we believe this. But that would be more of a critic, of a critical friend rather than a politically based comment. Thank you. Responding to that, it comes back to the point that I made before that hopefully the big scrutiny becomes more and more stronger than the reactive scrutiny. So it's the select committees that feed through what we do and shape what we do. And that way, the involvement is there. It's not a question of challenging it, it's actually challenging it at the start to say this is the way we should do it. And if the uh, cabinet members who are responsible for the portfolios that are being allocated in the command of policy, engage and do that with the uh, lead members in across the districts and then do that with the select committees, that's hopefully what we'll achieve.
James Chair. Um, I, I have no issue, I, I just uh, purely out of um, wanting to know. Um, can I ask, are we being filmed on the purpose of the authority, or is that a member of the public? What, what's the use for the filming, please? Uh, legislation was passed uh, some time ago that allowed public, public bodies, individuals, to come in and film us. And, and the gentleman that uh, is uh, a, member of the, a member of the public. That's absolutely fine. I have no issue, by the way. I just wanted to know if it was public or authority. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any apologies? to appoint two members of this student panel to the audit committee. Um, it's uh, one of the tasks that we have. <laughs> if anybody wishes to put themselves forward for the audit committee. Okay. Uh, no, we need two people.
arrangement for the combined authority between now and May 2017 will remain the same. There will be no changes. From uh, May 17, that's when the new arrangements will take effect. Uh, and what the scheme seeks to do is to identify how that model will operate. So this isn't a consultation about should the city region have a directly elected mayor for the combined authority. That's already been determined and decided, and that was determined and decided in November 2015 by all the constituent authorities and the combined authority. What this particular document seeks to do is set out how that will operate, and by operating in a different way, how it improves the effectiveness <coughs> of the decision making throughout the, the, the new powers that were going to be granted by government. Um, and you have seen in the papers that there's a timeline that we have to go through. So that process of consultation started on the 24th of June. It will run for six weeks. Around the middle of August, we'll report back to the Combined Authority what people have told us. The Combined Authority will then, if it's satisfied that the uh, scheme is the right scheme to go forward, they'll put back, that back to government. The Secretary of State will then determine whether he or she is happy that, uh, that the scheme is sufficient to improve governance. And if he or she is, they'll tell us that. And then each of the authorities and the combined authority in October will make a final decision to invoke the new arrangements with effect from May next year. That will require a act of parliament, or it's an act of parliament, but a parliamentary process before the end of the year to affect the legislation, which is secondary legislation, to take the combined authority with the elected mayor forward under the scheme that we are proposing. So what the document does, the detailed document, sets out how we govern the combined authority now, gives some indication of the detail of what powers the combined authority have got and how they're delivering them, sets out the new powers that government are preparing to devolve to the combined authority, sets out how the combined authority think they should be delivered those powers within the confines of the devolution deal that was discussed in November. And it is particularly relevant that statement because what we're seeking to do is to bring into practice what was agreed in the November devolution deal. Um, and then um, it, it, it sets out in a little bit more detail who will exercise those powers and how they will exercise them without doing it in a legal document. That will be the constitution, which we will then have to draft through the autumn uh, and then into the winter so that it's ready for adoption by the combined authority at its first meeting in May of 2017. So there's a lot of detail in there, uh, as you will have seen. Lisa and a number of colleagues have put a lot of uh, time and effort into getting us to this point, uh, and we're here today to try and answer any questions on that detail. Just to pick up some of the earlier points, but please, you might need to repeat the questions, uh, and we'll try and deal with those if you can do that, that'd be helpful. In terms of uh, what you say, you can say whatever you want to feed into the system either as a collective scrutiny panel, or as individual councillors, or as individual residents of the wider Liverpool city region. We will receive those comments, they'll be recorded, they'll be reported back, this has got some details of, of how many people have responded already to the consultation. We won't go into the detail of their responses today, um, but there will be that detail will be available in due course, reported back to you over the so, there's nothing else that I want to say by way of introduction. I don't know that Lisa's got anything she wants to add. Just, just to say, also, what you're trying to set out is really the rationale around each of the powers that are being devolved to the city region about why it's very important to them 
certain things 